Well, we've traveled north in the Torino to buy this probably the most original, nicest 78 LTD I've ever seen. It was uh, truly a little old lady's car, and I bought it. The car has 21,000 miles on it. You know how I know that's legitimate? Well, you could pretty much just look at it. This thing has never been touched. It's got four-wheel disc brakes, 400 under the hood. There's not a bit of rust under the roof. This is the nicest car I've ever seen. You got hideaway headlights on it, and we're gonna see if it'll drive home. The guy told me that the original tires on the car got recalled. They were Firestones, and they were recalled, so they replaced them with these. Well, that was in the late 70s. This car hasn't even had a set of tires worn out on it. 21,000 miles. You got intermittent wipers, AM, FM, and crank windows. <laughs> and under the hood is just a little 400. No 460, but that's okay. A brand new battery, and the guy's already rebuilt the carburetor and cleaned out the fuel tank, which is good from sitting for so long. See that? It literally says 1978 on the spark plug wires. It has the original spark plugs in it. The only thing that's wrong with it is it needs the bearing for the AC compressor because it made noise. Power steering belt still says Motorcraft on it on the other side. That's an original radiator hose with the original bale style clamps on it. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, it's literally untouched. This is a brand new car from 50 years ago. I don't think any dead bodies have been in here. I mean, there's not even any blood stains. It's clean. I mean, it's like day one in here. You know there's a factory spare in there. I don't want to mess with it right now. We'll do that later. It's even got the trunk light, jack instructions. What the hell is this thing? That's just some kind of cover or something. I guess. I, it's just all original. Look at the trunk latch. You can just tell by looking at that that that's factory grease and that this just hasn't been opened and closed that much. Look at the... Look at the, the wear mark here. Just by simply not being used as much as other cars, you can tell a difference. Never had a car this nice before. <laughs> There's a catch to this car. He's never driven it. He's driven it three miles, he said. And that's it. Because he lives on a gravel road and he didn't want to tear it up on the gravel. We got to drive about an hour. Oh my gosh, it runs so good though. We've got 50 year old tires on it. What could possibly go wrong? You can already tell, brakes are a little weird on it. This is that Hydra Boost with the four wheel disc. Kind of seems like uh, we've only got front brakes. So we'll find out. Yeah! Got AM FM, baby. Yeah. No, oh, that's a horn there. Yeah. Do we dare try the cruise control once we get out on the highway? Maybe. We'll try it. Oh. Hey, the clock works. Oh yeah, it does. <laughs> Time. 1:30. All right, on the pavement. Ooh. Nice and smooth. I bet the tires are square as hell, though. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Not too bad, though. I mean, we got up to 45 there. Can't go too fast through town. Yeah, it's going to need a set of tires, and we're going to have to look at the brakes and everything. But this is, as far as I'm concerned, this is a brand new car. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this doesn't happen. Man. Other than the tires being square as hell, made it to a gas stop. It's a plus. <laughs> just beautiful. Oh, it's saying fasten your seatbelt, bud. Oh. Dad's driving the Torino following us. Had to take the only reliable car I own, which is, of course, that. And uh, now, hopefully, this. It's, I needed another car. I, I know that sounds really weird, but I actually needed another car. First time on the highway in at least 15 years. I mean, those tags were like 06. Uh, oh, man, those tires are square. Yeah. Maybe it'll come out of it if we drive a little bit faster. Sometimes that happens. Nope. We're just going to have to hope they round out. 
It, they, even with square tires, the steering wheel is smooth as silk. Mm -hmm. I just feel it in the back. I just hope we don't lose one, you know? This thing would run 120 down this highway, no problem. I could feel it. Oh, yeah. I got my foot just, oh wait. Uh, I don't know how to use the cruise control. Oh, the cruise control doesn't work. I got screwed. Hey, the gas gauge is working. Full tank. Cool. The gas gauge wasn't working at first, and now it is. We fixed it. Congratulations, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Done good job. What did we do? Nothing. Anyway, let's go home. We ate some delicious king of burgers, and it was technically food. Now we just have to get oscillated on the way home. <laughs> what you doing? No, don't worry about it. Well, let's squeak a tire. I'm gonna go squeaky squeak. What do you want to bet? You think it'll do anything at all? It might squeak a little bit. There we go. No, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> it accelerated at a normal rate. <laughs> I didn't even. That old man is just like taking off, and he, <laughs> he went faster. <laughs> Yeah, Toyota, Jamie. Yeah, Corolla. Yep. You know you can build 18 million of those out of just the hood of this car. That's a fact. Science. Science fact. <laughs> I think the tires are becoming more round. You know, it's not usually one of those things you got to be concerned about. Are my tires round? Yes. They are, well, no, they're more like octagons right now. At least they're not squares. We've gained a few sides. But it's pretty soon we'll be through most of the trapezoid family. Brakes are fading out pretty bad. Pedal went straight to the floor. That stoplight didn't feel very good. They, they worked, I mean, they stopped, but I'm gonna guess the master cylinder needs replaced. We start digging into that can of worms. You guys know how that goes. Probably gonna end up eating everything. I, mean, I didn't even look at anything. I just got in the car and then drove south, so. We're almost home. We got about half an hour left. Well, the brakes have returned. Kind of weird. Like they're fading in and out. I don't know if that's a hydro boost thing or if that's a, a master cylinder fade, which is, you know, would be pretty typical. I'm gonna try to fix the door strikers on this thing that are driving me insane. Every time, especially with the square tires, this door is just And uh, thanks to Ford's quality in 1978, I'm sure that was just always like that. Better. You use that trick on square body Chevys a lot. I think. I can't imagine anything's missing off of this car, but... Yeah, she made her home. Let's see if the brake pedal holds. Yeah. I think the brakes work fine, it's just the... We're losing pressure occasionally. It's only happened like once, but... You gotta take a look at it for sure. I mean, 21,000 miles or not, but uh, it's still 40, what, 45-year-old brake components. I took my shoes off. I didn't want to get mud in it. Did I run over my shoes? Well, first things first, we got to get a set of tires for this. That's really the biggest thing the car needs, right? I go on eBay, I get four for 354 bucks. Free shipping. And by the way, the electrical tape on the door striker, mint. Perfect. Let's go through the things that tell me this is an original 21,000 mile car. Let's start under the hood here. This is where the tail's really gonna be told. So you can clean an interior, you can clean up a body, you know, and you can even have nice original paint at 120,000 miles. You're not gonna get away without replacing some components, right? For one, I noticed that the air snorkel's intact. That's never there. The idler pulley, nice and free, not all wore out. Granted, the AC compressor bearing is bad. That can happen from sitting, but that was kind of a, I'm not sure, kind of deal. We've already looked at the plug wires. They're 1978 original plug wires, but it's not out of question that a plug wire could last 120,000 miles. 
that's not a certainty. Ford marked every hose with a part number. It's kind of handy. Uh, so every hose on here is original and it's never been off. And the, I don't know if that alternator belt's been changed for sure, but this power steering belt is original. No doubt about it. It has the Ford part number on it. Everything. Now granted your AC hoses and stuff like that, that's all going to be, the, most likely those have not been changed. But every sticker is intact. See how it's crooked? <laughs> you notice things like that. This car has runs in the paint. That's factory runs. The, the quality on these cars was not good. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's okay to see a few things like that. You know, we have the original DuraSpark box on here. Look at the stamp on the side. It's either original or it's a replacement very soon after it was new. There's no grease on the firewall. There's no grease underneath the valve cover. I mean, there's nothing. It's clean as can be. It looks like a brand new car, and that's because it is. Further verify our claims as we move inside. Big red flag for me on this was the steering wheel cover. When I saw that in the marketplace listing, I was like, nah, no 21,000 mile car has a wore out steering wheel. Well, I think that's been on there for probably 40 years. There's nothing wrong with that steering wheel under there. We're going to take that off. Look at the brake pedal. All the serrations of the brake pedal, they look like brand new. You can see just a little bit of chrome flaking on the end of that turn signal lever. That's just from use. Now is it 120,000 miles or is it 20,000? I'm going to say it's 20 because if I look at the shifter lever, there's no chrome missing there. Every knob, every button is in excellent condition. The things that you're using and get fingers put on them, those are the things that wear. This bolster is still in good shape. That, again, doesn't necessarily mean that it's super low mileage. It's a good indicator. These are the factory floor mats. They're in excellent condition. There's a lot here that tells me it's legit. Other than the fact that it was the seller's parents car and it's a one owner car, I have the original title. I'm just trying to show you some things to look for when you're looking to buy a low mileage car. You know, on a vinyl top car, what tells me the car is 21,000 miles is that the roof still exists. See this run? This big old sag right here? Mm -hmm. That's factory. That's factory. These cars were hand painted. There's no robots. See the big sags huh. all the way down it? That's factory. That doesn't mean it's been repainted. That means that Joe was, <laughs> you know, it was a Friday. I could sleep in this car. Just... Yeah. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff in here. Car caddy, glove compartment organizer. Here's a receipt. This is from 1968 on a 67 LTD with 6,500 miles on it. This is a different car. He kept it. He paid fifteen dollars and one cent for something. This must have been in their in their old car. Fuel record, maps, glasses, <laughs> registration, insurance, and your credit card. You could just steal this whole thing, and you'd be good to go. I mean, uh, insurance policy from 1968, so that's that would have been on their old car too. Space Race 78 Excellence Program. <laughs> to help you survive in your drive for Space Race 78. Oh, needle and thread and band-aids, bobby pins. What was that? Do you, if you know what Space Race 78 was, let me know. What's this? It's from Sears. Oh, ah. it goes up on your visor. Kansas City mobile travel map. Oh, from 1971. Application for license in 2004. Oh, St. Joseph, Missouri map with his business card glued to it. My scrapbook. What are we going to find in there? Uh, nothing. Here's a fuel filter. Oh, there's two. Uh oh. <laughs> uh. They must have. So the guy I got it from rebuilt the carburetor and cleaned out the gas tank. I bet they were starting to have problems with the fuel filter, huh? Yeah, probably. We'll leave these in bad. here, though. Uh... Manpower healthcare. What the heck? I don't know. Kansas map. Travel carefree with a Skelly credit card. <laughs> yes, really nice. Another map? Missouri, 1981 and 82. Official highway map. Plan ahead for safety. A guide for good drivers. Six special driving situations. This shows 1967 model year cars. 67 Galaxy, 67 Mustang. So this is from their first car. Purchase date, May 25th, 1978. That's the, uh, it's like the Protecta plate for GM cars, but it's for Ford. It's a copy of the Vintag, so you could prove oh. that's my car. Limited warranty, 12 month or 12,000 miles. Damn it! We're... 
We're just out of warranty. <laughs> oh, he had a muffler put on it in 1986 for $17. Car was $7,900. Paid 165 bucks a month for 48 months. Oh, that's the window sticker. Track lock axle, so it's got a limited slip in it. White sidewall tires. Cruise control. Four wheel power disc brakes. Deluxe bumper. AC, AM, FM, Landau Luxury Group. Light group, fender skirts, and trailering package. We're getting rid of this. I hate this with a passion, and I bet that steering wheel is in perfect condition underneath it. I bet you put that on there to preserve the steering wheel. I probably put it on there because it's more comfortable, or he thought it was more comfortable. I don't like them. I don't like them. Look at that, it's freaking brand new. That's been on there since day one. I mean, there's not even a mark on it from like a ring or anything. So I'm gonna peel off some of this stuff because it doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm not gonna peel off some of the stickers like this. That's the Department of Defense parking pass. He was a major at Fort Leavenworth. I think that's pretty cool and I think we should just kind of honor him a little bit by leaving his parking passes on the bumpers and the windshield. I might peel off that blue one though. And I'm gonna leave the 2002 inspection sticker too. I'm gonna leave this Department of Defense sticker on here. That way I can sneak into some miss. I mean, uh, <clears throat> we'll leave that one too. That's cool. Yes. Oh little detailer here it's not what the bottle says it is but I'm gonna polish this thing too I just kind of wanted to I wanted to I, don't know, I just wanted to clean it a little bit I guess I don't know. you know even though I just bought the car just to use for transportation doesn't mean it can't be nice you know I want to take a look inside this master cylinder while we're under here okay it seems to be under pressure or what whoa hm. or it's just oh man I got brake fluid everywhere now shit it's nasty. See how the front brake reservoir is low though? Mm -hmm. Leaking maybe? I didn't see anything dripping out of the back of the master cylinder. That doesn't mean anything necessarily, but typically if the master cylinder was bad, you know, you'd see it coming out the back. We'll look at it. I, I don't want you guys freaking out in the comments. I, I'll take a look at it, but especially since I plan on driving it about 500 miles a week. That's more than it did per year if you average it out, so. Wow, look at that. See that? See the difference that's making? Uh-huh. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to do an interior yeah. cleaning on this. It's pretty damn clean, isn't it? Maybe just a quick wipe off of everything. It's just dust. There's nothing in here. There's mm -hmm. a muddy footprint for me. <laughs> oh, there's a cobweb. Oh no. I got it. I got it. It's detailed now. A little Marvel mystery oil. This stuff will really help out the valves. The carburetor, even though you already rebuilt it, and the fuel pump. Everybody's grandpa uses this stuff, right? There's a reason. So we'll just put a little bit in here. Let's go ahead and change the oil in it, because the guy said he had never changed the oil. It means it probably hasn't had oil change in 15, at least 15 years. 06? Yeah. 17 years. I wonder what kind of filter it's got. Looks like a Ford filter. It is a Ford filter. Oh, it was due. Yeah, look at it. It's not too bad. Yeah. Ford Motorcraft oil filter. Well, now I'm gonna put a wrench on the drain plug. See? Oh no, it's so tight. Oh, oh, no. It's so, it's dramatic. It's impossible. It's so difficult. Okay, so he's Whoa, turning I got the drain. It. I got it. I, which way am I turning it? Right? No, left. There we go. Perfect. Okay, turning the drain, turning the drain. See that? It's got a seal on it. Whoa! This is hardcore mechanic stuff. Here's the flavor of filter we got here. It's a Wix. Oh my god. 51515, manufactured December 8th, 2022. Oh my god. You get the action shot? Are you getting are you getting the shot? They have to see it. Dude, you see it? You see that? I yes. just spun the oil filter on. You see that? Uh-huh. Did you see it? Did you get yes, it? Yes, I saw it. Okay, good. Good. Just make it sure. Guess uh -huh. what I'm doing now? Oh my god. I'm being evil Ooh. and tightening it with an oil filter. You know it has to be hand tight, right? Oh my god, it'll never come. Oh wait, it will, because I'll use an oil filter wrench. You got mad at me because I wasn't recording. You have to film tightening the bolt. If you don't film tightening the bolt, we're going to lose the shop, okay? The oil goes in the top of the valve cover. <gasps> it's so much different than every other engine. No, it's not. It's the same thing every single time, every week. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to put this Marvel in here just to help her out a bit. If it, just in case it needs it, it this stuff is good to add to pretty much anything. You can even drink it. No, don't do that. So I actually spent some big bucks. Bought Valvoline VR1 oil. This has zinc in it. Uh, this is formulated for older engines, flat tapping cams. I didn't want to skimp on this one. Whoa, look at that. See that? Whoa, 
Hang on, I'll do it this way. Whoa. 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 I got some mad skills. <laughs> <laughs> no cap, bro. Whoa. We completed the super dramatic oil change. Let's see if it still runs. Oh my god, it still runs. Well, I get asked a lot, how do you maintain having a full-time job, doing all the YouTube stuff, everything that we end up doing around here, and uh, it takes a lot out of you. Well, one way I support my energy every day is with AG1. AG1 is a nutrition supplement powder, and every morning I drink this, and I tell you what, it makes a big difference. Take one heaping spoonful, dump it into my handy little AG1 cup here, shake it up real good, and I chug it down. So I've been on the go a lot lately for training for work, my normal job, and they have these little to-go packets here. I've been able to travel with them real easy. AG1 also has probiotics in it, helps your gut health when you're on the road a lot. You don't eat the best, this helps. If you order with the link in the pinned comment right now, you get 30 days of the to-go pouches and also a year's supply of the AG1, vitamin D3, and K2. I used to take a lot of multivitamins and minerals and stuff like that separately. Well now I can just conveniently take them all in one package here. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a more complete package than AG1. Right, let's get back to the action. Back today. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that bearing for the AC clutch. Uh, I bought one. Who's that? What kind of shit box is this? Oh Jesus. Well, once again, I've been rudely interrupted by some pile of crap winding up in my driveway. Yeah, Kevin, subpar asshole YouTubers. <laughs> I think they can just show up in your place whenever they want. I know, what does this place look like, a scrapyard to you? Kevin and Angus drove down to Texas. It's Kevin, Junkyard Diggs, you know him. Angus, of course. Hi. And uh, Angus bought this heap of shit, 84 Caprice? Impala. Impala? That's okay. been a common misconception. Okay. There were not many. This is the last year they ever ran the name. Really? In a Caprice body. It barely made it literally dying and sputtering into my driveway has, from Texas. We might have to push it to wherever you're parking it. Probably Even out by here. the bus. Oh, yeah. Get, yeah. get the tractor. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get back to work on the LTD soon, as soon as we uh, you know, finish a few things. So here's all the crap it came with out of this bag in the trunk. I bought a bearing. It is the right bearing. It goes in here, but I don't know how it goes together because I didn't take it apart. Best I can assume is that this seal here goes on this shaft, probably slides back in there, and then this bale is probably supposed to retain that seal somehow. And then this snap ring goes here, which holds the bearing in place. I'm not really sure. Let's uh, let's do some figuring here. I'm just gonna poke that seal into here until it until it don't go no more, right? Probably something like that, don't you think? Yeah. Oh, there it snapped. Oh, well, good. Okay. Yeah, here. Yeah. There was something in there for it to grab at least. This goes on last. So this goes on next. I'm not sure. I think we put this on like that, then we put our new bearing in. We're probably going to have to get a block of wood and tap that bearing in. We could probably do it on a workbench though. On the workbench, you know. Maybe it needs to tap in there further? That bearing can go in there quite a bit further. I think we need to get a big socket. Uh -huh. That bearing can go in another quarter inch. Hopefully I don't destroy this. Oh, she's going. Yeah, look at that, huh? I'm a mechanic. And there we go. I can see that snap ring playing as day. I don't think it's seated all the way, is it? No, I think it's going a little bit more. Let me tap it with a screwdriver. Definitely don't want that coming off. Yeah, that'd be bad. That'd be real bad. Um, I guess that's fine. Yeah, that works. There we go. Okay, so now we gotta put this back on. And then the bolt. The actual clutch assembly. How does this work? <laughs> that key was driven all the way to the end of the shaft. So I just knocked it towards the back of it to where I can grab the keyway. Like that, theoretically, it should just go right on, right? Ha ha. We could suck it on with the, uh, you know, with the bolt. Mm hmm so It just gotta go on a little bit further before we can do that. I'm gonna guess this is a really tight fit. <laughs> Make sure there's no debris in it. And uh, we'll just get some clean oil to put on it. There we go. Oh, uh, that's not clean. Yeah, it is. It's new. I just bought it. 
Well, I bought a whole car. It came with it. Yeah. Just a light coat of oil, see if that helps. I mean, it really doesn't want to go on there. There we go. Heck yeah. Yeah. Block of wood and a hammer. Fixes everything. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, but I'm just going to put a dab of Loctite on that thing, you know? Thread that on there, which means I'm going to drop it. And three, two. Oh. Wow. It was missing the nut, so we had to put a new one on. It's, like it's a non-original nut. Oh. Yeah, I mean, that's probably good. Yeah. Let's put a belt on it, and we gotta, gotta loosen the alternator. So we take the alternator belt off. Get the AC belt on there. I will say it's very nice that the whole thing is original. However, that means that all the crap is in the way. I don't want to touch it because it's been there since 1978, so it's kind of making me nervous. I, I don't know. I had a wrench. Where'd it go? Got the tensioner pulley loose. It's very nice that this has an actual tensioner pulley on it. Oh, made in Korea, so you know it's good. It you know. It's like barbecue. No, it doesn't. You gotta milk this content for all it's worth, JD. Now we're tightening a belt. Nobody's ever done it before. <laughs> Our belts are back on. Uh, I guess we'll fire it up, see if it works. It might be too cold for it to come on, but I think it'll come on with defrost. <laughs> it's supposed to turn. Oh. Probably just too cold. Or there's a thermostatic switch on it. And if it's too cold, I think it's below 40 degrees, it won't let that turn on. So I guess we won't know until it gets a little warmer. If it Ever does. I think that clutch is bad. I don't think it was the bearing, but that's just me. We'll see. I'll buy a new compressor. I really want to dig in and give this thing its due justice. Right, so the next thing we need to do is check out the brakes and make sure it's safe. Uh, I was just going to kind of rush through a video, but I don't think I'm going to do that now. I think there's some value here in seeing what you still should look at, even if your car is very low mileage, but also old. But before we do that, well, we have to make things a little more festive in here. So JD went and cut us a Christmas tree. Go ahead and grab the tree. Put that up because we celebrate holidays here in this barn. And so now we, there, it's customary. I mean, it's kind of an old, uh, old world thing. We take our uh, 600 holly and hang it from the tree. Now, of course, you could save 20% off through December 27th. Uh, on your favorite Holly products by clicking the link in the description. We will hang our old 600 Holly from the tree here. And uh, put... well, we're gonna need to do one of those, I guess. Uh, so I will save 20% off of one when I go buy one from holly.com or down in the description. There's a link, it helps me out. If you click that link, I don't get any money from it. But then they see like, oh, hey, people actually watch this channel. It helps a little bit. All right, pop the wheel covers off carefully. Oh, spiders, yum. Pads look like brand new. We need to do a little closer inspection on the hose. Rotor looks okay. Good. Look at that tire. Still got the teats on it. <laughs> and there, oh, wow. There's no cracking. None. I mean, that. it looks fine. It's soft still. I just don't trust it because it's so old. Skirts off of the rear. I was thinking of taking the skirts off entirely. It's just me. I mean. No. You, know, you like them? Yeah. They are definitely for the car, you know? Mm hmm I get it. Let's see the really cool thing about this car, which is its four-wheel disc brakes. Look at that. Huge disc brake on the back. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. These are from the factory. They hold the rotor onto the car as it's being assembled so it doesn't fall off. So I'm gonna be looking for a couple of things. Um, for one, we had a loss of brake fluid. That was in the front, so we need to check both fronts out and make sure that, you know, we don't see anything leaking. The other thing I'm gonna look for is cracking in these rubber hoses. Whether or not they happen to be in great shape or not, that doesn't mean that they're uh, safe, you know. This one looks fine. This one does look totally fine. So I'm looking for, see how I'm flexing this? See how easy it moves and stuff? It's okay. And we're gonna look at bushings. So these cars use a four link suspension. So they have control arm bushings. You gotta remember, rubber deteriorates over time. It is not forever. So I'm gonna slide under here 
Uh, here's a good example right here. This pan hard bar. And the cracks in it. It's got hardly no wear at all, but age has made a crack. It's okay for right now, but that's going to fail prematurely because of the age. Thankfully, this car did have its factory undercoating done, which they did a typical late 1970s job of doing, apparently. So the old boy we got this from, he dropped the tank and cleaned it. But look at that. I'm going to guess he didn't put a new grommet on the fuel filler here. And you can see the fuel seeping past that. I thought I smelled something. You see how it's still flexible? It's just old. See that? Jay, you see it? Yeah. That's a wheel bearing. So we need to pull this wheel bearing out. And if we're doing one, we better do them both. Looks like somebody has greased this thing way too much over the years. Uh, I mean, how many lube jobs could it have possibly needed in 20,000 miles? I don't see anything leaking out of the brakes. Do you? No, I, I haven't don't. seen anything wet at all. Probably the master cylinder is leaking, if anything's leaking at all. Let's pull off that other rear brake, check it out, and then we'll do the front wheel brakes. This smells a lot like this. Oh, yeah. Oof. Yep. That one's stuck on. So, guess who's doing brake hoses on all of them? You have to do all of them? If I'm doing one, I'm doing them all. If, so, what, the, what has happened here... This brake is stuck. It's not real bad right now. And uh, we don't have smell vision You can't smell it. But its I can tell this has been stuck on. Not all the way, but it could happen any time. And it's just this one. So what's happened here is even though this hose looks so well, actually, actually this hose doesn't flex very good at all for whatever reason. But what has happened is this hose is breaking down inside. And probably us driving at home, first time it's really been driven in 15, 20 years, has made the inside of that hose collapse. So when I hit the brakes, this came on, works, and then it stays on because the fluid can't escape, it can't return. So my uh, local parts store doesn't carry uh, anything ever. They don't even list rear brake hoses for this car. I did get them off of Rock Auto, but they'll be here in like two days. So, in the meantime, I'm going to spray down and soak in penetrating lube every single one of these brake lines because I'm sure they're just fine and we don't need to replace them. I don't want to break them. I was expecting to see a flex hose down to the axle running to each wheel, but no. It's just got a T here, hard line into a T, and that splits off for each rear wheel, and each rear wheel has a separate rubber hose. Well, that's actually kind of nice. It's going to make it a lot easier to get to these. I'm going to pop this caliper off just so we can check out this wheel bearing. We'll probably check out the other bearing as well, of course. Uh, I, they probably don't really need repacked so much as just snugged up, but we'll take a look at them. Calipers use a wedge to float the caliper in place. I didn't believe in bolts. Try in on the pad. We can push that piston in a little bit. Now, this gives us a good opportunity to take a look at the caliper seal. It looks perfect. That's just uh, my penetrating lube. Look at that. Yeah, we're re reusing those. Too. Yeah, they're perfect. Factory, too. Factory brake pad. Look at the blue paint on the end of that spindle. This has never been a part. Not once. Huh. That is factory Ford grease science fact. There's enough metal in that cotter key to build 18 Toyota Prius. <laughs> There's no grease in the end of that. You know how everybody packs that full of grease? Yeah, don't, you don't have to do that. We're going to wear all that original paint off of there. Oh, they're due. They need packed. There's the wheel seal. And what I like to clean my bearings with, I've just recently discovered this. This super clean stuff. You know, the old school guys use gasoline, right? And that's kind of dangerous. The super clean. I tell you what, this stuff will clean the shit out of some grease. Can't recommend it strongly enough. We just let them sit in there for a few minutes, pull them out, they'll hose out with brake clean, no problem. Well, I got this side apart, same story. But uh, I'm mighty upset. See, we just checked the uh, regular recommended service interval here. And uh, right down here, uh, brake lines, hoses, and front wheel bearing lube. It says to do that every 30 months or 30,000 miles. And boy, I, we've only hit 
21,000 miles before we had to check out the bearings. I mean, I think we need to take it back to Ford probably. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the purple super clean is no longer purple. Let me dump it in here a couple of times, wipe it off, and the little spritz of brake clean, and all the old grease will be out of that, ready to take new grease. Oh. See. What? Oh, oh. How'd that happen? It needs a bearing. Here, let me get a better look at that. But to make a parts run and get a new inner bearing for the other side, too bad. I hate putting in aftermarket wheel bearings. Just that little bend in it, I don't know. I'm planning on driving this car a couple thousand miles next summer, so we really should just go ahead and take care of those problems now before they're an issue later. Unless it just hit something with the other wheel once upon a time. A little grease in the palm. So it starts to come out in between the inner and the outer shell of the bearing until I see nice bright red grease. Set my bearings, I tighten them all the way down and then back them off. I want them to spin nice and free, but when you have to line up your cotter key in it, see how it's, you can see here, it's off about half of a spot, right? Basically, I've always tightened to get that extra little bit out of it. And that's good enough for me. Still spins nice and free. There. I didn't want to put a dent in that, you know. <laughs> it's lived this long, you know. I think it deserves to, it deserves a little extra care. I know you're not used to that on this channel. This is fluid film. I ordered a gallon pail of it. Uh, it'll be here tomorrow, but I wanted to see what this would do first. Oh, it does kind of fan out. So this stuff works really good to coat your frame, your floors, your wheelhouses, and everything with. It's not like undercoating, it just, you know, it, it puts an oily film basically over it that will dry and it will protect it from rust. And considering it's winter time and I plan on driving this car, I would like to do that. Uh, you know, is it, uh, is it a permanent thing? Is it going to totally eliminate rust? No. But it'll damn sure help. So let's see how far these two cans will go and see if I even need to buy that gallon pail. They may go quite a ways. The good thing about the aerosol cans is you can kind of get in the holes of the frame and spray it around in there kind of give everything is i don't know at least a little bit of protection i mean it looks horrible and no paint's ever going to stick to this but that's okay make sure you get the inside of the fender buddy all right well it smells terrible yeah it's really not pleasant is it no oh yeah <laughs> i bet it works this is a really bad rust area in these cars, and it is, of course, perfectly solid. So let's coat the hell out of this stuff. Keep it that way. So we can make sure that the bumper never falls off of this one. Yeah, there we go. All right, keep her nice and preserved. This shit's basically Cosmoline. I would like to just give everything a shake down. A little bit of tail shaft play. It's okay. At least take a look at the U-joints. They feel perfectly fine. Everything's totally fine. But not the underside of the car is protected. We should try to protect the exterior of the car as well. Now, it's had a bazillion coats of wax put on it over the years. I noticed some staining. You can kind of see it in the camera. It's not super obvious, but there's some staining, like something dripped on the hood. And the hood is really the only place where it's at. The car still has a great finish to it. I mean, it's in great shape. This old lacquer is holding up really well, but I think we can make it a little bit better and protect it. You really see that staining right here. I definitely want that out of it. What I'm gonna try to use here is an orbital polisher. This is not a radial polisher. It won't dig in. Like, there's, it really minimizes your risk of hurting something. So it's a lot easier to maintain, and we're not trying to like cut the paint. We're just trying to just bring it out a hair. This new finish stuff is old school. It works really well for this kind of thing. I have other things to try if this won't cut it, but I figured I'd, I'd start with something, you know, kind of light. Okay, so it's partially coming out. The good thing is, oh, wow, look at the shine on the paint, though. It is going to help that shine. I don't know if that staining is going to want to come out or not. This thing's going to look like a million dollars, man. I mean, seriously. I don't have enough time to do it all tonight, but I just kind of want to 
trying to get my my battle plan down here on how I'm gonna go after this thing. The hood's the worst part. The rest of it ain't gonna be nothing. I'm gonna go to a heavier pad, and then some of this chemical guy's paint correction compound I have left over. I'm just not willing to go to rubbing compound yet, because that stuff's pretty aggressive. That got it. See that staining's basically gone, but it's still out there. I don't know how obvious this is on camera, but I've done this side of the hood. And it is pretty much perfect. I mean, it's got some scratches and stuff in it. I'm not willing to dig deep enough for those. You can see the oxidization over here versus this. And this is going to last. And that new finish is pretty good stuff. You can see how much oxidization we pulled out of it with that correction compound. Uh, I might need a couple more pads. I don't think all of it's going to be as bad as the hood though. Maybe the trunk, but the sides of the car I think I can just hit with regular polish. Hey, right, back out today, still waiting on parts. So really the only thing we can do is polish this thing up, and that's fine by me, because I want to make the whole car look like that. So let's dig in. The only thing to really note here is that these pinstripes are hand painted on by the factory, so we're going to stay away from those, that way we don't risk tearing them up at all. Well, JD's out here. He's gonna hand wax the front of this. I already did this side and kind of cleaned up the old wax as best I could. And the bumper, I got a nice shiny spot on the bumper, so a little wax on the bumper probably won't hurt either. To do that, I'm gonna finish polishing the uh, sides of the car. The hood's looking great though. Look at that. go it's looking about as new as it possibly could I think pretty damn slick I bought a gallon of fluid film here this brown poop like substance is fluid film which is just lanolin it's wool oil Ugh, yeah yeah muffler guy's gonna love this he's under it on the lift and the whole thing is covered in oil well this thing is now appropriately slathered in fluid film <laughs> But uh, it's definitely not going to rust. We can guarantee that. However, check this out. Look at this. From the factory, transmission cross member bolts loose. Is that one tight? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is loose. And I don't believe it's ever had a transmission out of it. No, that just didn't quite make it. You know, it's 1978 quality. Tighten that up. That's one less rattle that this has had for the past 45 years. Two days later, I'm still waiting on my parts. I have two front brake hoses and a master cylinder though, but I actually want to see if one of these front brake hoses will work on the rear, you know, the one that's actually bad. Because I want to go drive the car and I got new tires for it, all kinds of stuff. I've been just stuck waiting on freaking the postal service, you know, but pretty cliche, but I'm stuck waiting on them. I'm gonna pull one of these rear hoses off just in case they don't deliver my stuff tomorrow like they're supposed to. At least I'll know what I can buy. What do you think? Maybe get lucky? They break free? No. <laughs> really don't want to put brake lines on you. Oh, there it went. See the nasty goo that vaguely resembles brake fluid coming in here? That's, uh, you really don't want your brake fluid to look like that. I believe a complete flush will be in order along with all the other stuff we're doing. I think it was on there tighter than hell. But I got it. Caliper is full of fluid, and there's almost nothing on this side. Fluid go any, fluid not come outy. Those are technical terms. It looks to me like the front hose is the exact same thing as the rear hose, except the rear hose has this big chalky rubber thing on it. Worst comes to worst, tomorrow morning I will put two more front hoses on the back. For now though, I'll put these on the front. Think it'll come loose? Let's see. 
Oh yeah. Nothing like break wine gambling. It's one of my least favorite games actually. Yeah, this is why you should always service your break. I'm gonna reuse all the copper washers. Shh. We'll just replace this and it will be completely fine and need nothing. Alright JD, break wine gambling, you got five bucks on it? Uh a dollar. Yeah. A dollar? Yeah. That's not much of a gamble. That's all I got. Alright, I'll do the dollar. Dollar comes loose? Yeah. Alright, how are you, dollar? Oh, okay. One way or the other, I always lose. I'll play the last game of break line gambling for the night. And see if I can't get this apart back here. Probably not. But lucky on three out of four, your odds are pretty good. Oh! Pretty snug. Ah. Ooh, we barely got her. It's a win. Sevens. And here's our new master cylinder. It's one of those aluminum units that they've been making lately. And it, uh, you know, it doesn't even resemble uh, this one. But uh, I guess if the bore size is the same, it'll still work. I don't know, I'll throw it on there, but if we have problems, then I'll just rebuild that one. I'm going to keep that one anyway, I can promise you that. Or if I take it off of there and it doesn't look like it's been leaking, it's going right back on there after we flush it out and clean it. Get it popped off here and inspect around the back of the bore and see if we can, I don't know, see if it's been leaking or anything. If it hasn't been leaking, then simple clean up, throw it back on, it'll do the trick. I'm very scared to touch anything in this car. It's so beautiful. I have to stick a rag underneath here to catch the brake fluid. I really don't want brake fluid all over this baby. This thing is just too nice. Oh, I forgot to play brake line gambling. Do 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 do. Well, this one broke free, but will the next one? I yeah, it's gonna. See what lies within this thing. Oh, oh yep, <laughs> yep. It's bad. Uh, all that gunk build up around there is from it leaking over time. And also you can see the piston is actually partially frozen in the bore. Uh, it's totally rebuildable, absolutely, 100%. But uh, I don't have the stuff to do it unless it happened to be the same as the new one. But I kind of doubt it because they look different. The piston might be. But I don't know about anything else. Let's try it. I mean, the worst that happens is it doesn't work. You know, the mounting flange and the piston appear to be more or less the same. At least we probably saved it before it damaged the Hydra Boost. Clean that off. Go ahead and throw this up here on my highly advanced bench bleeding setup. Just gonna push the piston in until I quit seeing bubbles. Sometimes you'll have a little better luck. If you kind of work the first half and get some bubbles. Bubbles are bad. You don't want bubbles in your master cylinder. They'll prevent you from breaking. I mean, they're bubbles. That's what they do. See the evil bubbles? They're evil. Evil little monsters. Brake lines are in completely different spots. Uh, hopefully they're the right thread. Thread pitch appears to be correct, so got that going for it. I guess it's aluminum, so at least it won't rust. Hooray! Now there's that. Uh, will it actually do anything? I guess we'll find out tomorrow when we get our rear brake hoses. God, I hope we get our rear brake hoses two days late. But uh, I did notice something I want to address. So the cruise control sort of worked in this thing, right? Well, I just read the factory instructions here. And I'm going to say that there's well more than a quarter inch of uh, free travel in this. I haven't even pulled the air cleaner off of this thing. I'm going to guess one of these beads is probably roughly a quarter of an inch. Open it up, give it an extra bead here, and see what happens. A little bit tighter. We'll see what happens. Maybe it just runs away and all 150 horsepower of this bad boy just down the highway. I, I doubt that, though. Long last, my battle with the post office has ceased. And now, I have our super special rear rubber brake hoses. Let's get these things on here, bleed the brakes, and then I, I really want to drive. I want to drive my new car, my brand new car. You know, they just don't make them like they used to. I've had to do all kinds of work on this thing, and it's brand new. Right, I'm going to try to use my air bleeder here. Then our next big hurdle here is, can we get the bleeders to break free? And yeah. I've been soaking them for a couple of days while we waited for parts, so 
At least I had the opportunity to do that. All right, well, let's see what happens. Yucky, yucky, yucky. Brown goo, not good for break break. That's science terms, really. Blop, 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 blop. My biggest hang up with this thing is I don't know how to tell when they're finished bleeding. It ends up sucking air around the threads of the bleeder and you can't really see if you have air or not. So I just kind of go with the suck all of it out method and it must be fine. I will now make the ever dangerous assumption that this is perfectly fine and move to the other side. Mm. More magical brown goo. I know having brake bleeders break free is a strange thing to get excited about, but trust me. You guys on the west coast and down south, this you don't have to deal with this. This stuff, usually that stuff never breaks free around here. It's just because the car hasn't been in the salt very much, if at all, ever. It's looking good so far. I think this one's probably about ready. I don't notice any leaks or anything. Probably all right. All right, now we're looking nice and clean coming out of this one. It's probably safe to assume that that is now bled. Uh, the fronts look great to me. The backs are a little concerning. I'm wondering how much of that is that master cylinder. Fill the reservoir up. Let's see what we got for brakes. Start it. So they feel terrible. I'm not really sure what to do right now other than take it back off and put the seals in the old master cylinder and see what happens. I guess I can fire it up, put it in gear and see if they're working. Considering that they didn't pump up and I have no pedal at all, it's the master cylinder. The line on the master cylinder was a little bit loose as the one I put on there. So maybe that was it. I don't know. I guess I forgot to tighten it. We got much better flow now. I still don't trust it as far as I could throw it, but uh, it's worth a shot, right? All right, I'm going to start it up. Let's see if we have brakes now. I just bled everything again. Finny? 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 Not Stop Finny. Me. Yeah. All right. Oh. We got something. Well, I picked up these bad boys on eBay. <laughs> So I'm sure these will last five, six miles. Let's just throw them back on here. They're better than square tires. Although I do prefer the triangle tire. Had to go with white walls. If you don't put white walls on your giant land yacht, it's actually against US Naval code. Now to have our deluxe wheel covers on, you know. That's not going to be annoying. And the skirt. Yes. Can't leave a lady undressed. Yeah, you can't go out on the town naked like that. It'd be disgusting. Especially a big old fat thing like this. And it turns out you get a lot of citations. Yes? Yeah. They put you on lists. Yeah. I'm only on two or three. Not that kind of list, though. Oh. You'll know how I'm able to admit my mistakes. You know, other channels won't <laughs> those hide stuff, like forgetting to tighten the lines on the master cylinder. But everybody does that, right? So it's okay to screw up now. It's when you screw up all the time that it becomes a real problem. This is not a jag, but it is a cough of distinguished gentleman. Close enough in my mind. Let's going down. the goodwill tag off of this. Oh, don't mind the shirt. Are you ready for our date night in the LTD? <laughs> let's go. <laughs> well, Jess gets her evening attire on. Let's go drive this thing and make sure the brakes actually work. I just didn't want to get in it dirty, you know, so I have to look LTD to drive the LTD, you see. <laughs> Brakes felt fine pulling out. I think they're good. I think I just had a little dumb moment. Oh, they feel great. They feel much better than before. Excellent. 
just want to make sure the thing will actually, you know, drive for us to go out and eat somewhere nice. You know, dressed up like we are. Practically irresistible, actually. Yeah, I think she's good to go. Let's go get Jess. We are ready to go out on the town. Yes, mm -hmm. let my hair down a bit. Yes. <laughs> the clock has kept perfect time sitting here for a week. I've never seen one actually work. Headlights are very dim in this thing. I mean, that freaking camera is not even picking them up. Drives nice and smooth now, new tires on it, and the brakes are working good, so let's go see, let's see where we end up. Go drive around for a while in our LTD. Let's fill her up. Six gallons to drive home 60 miles. Whenever we drove it home, it's 10 miles to the gallon. It's about what I would expect. It looks good under the lights here. Let's keep driving. Getting it a little bit cleaner. There's something all over the inside of this thing. It's probably wax like everything else. <laughs> uh, come on, 45 year old windshield wiper blades. Oh no! Oh. Those are literally the original windshield wiper blades. <laughs> Oh, cruise control set, 70 miles an hour. Looks like we got that adjusted halfway right. It's working and it's maintaining speed well. Car's nice and smooth. It definitely has something going on in it still. I'm not sure what, but maybe it'll drive out of it. Some fun night on the town. <laughs> the LTD. Uh, how does this work? I don't know how to drive around down here. I am a country boy. Yeah, this is a little, <laughs> little much. So far, pretty. Ooh. <laughs> take this boat through here. Yeah, no kidding. The USS LTD. I mean, what a spacious area. <laughs> oh man, come on, there's gotta be a spot somewhere. <laughs> well, that makes sense. You are a master navigator, babe. Yes. Set the sails. We have an eastern wind. Navigate by Polaris. <laughs> yeah, those rear brakes are grabby, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They'll wear in. I mean, at least they work. I guess you got that going for us. Ooh, it's very pretty up here. Alas! Come on, let's oh, go! God. Oh, God. <laughs> ah. There we go. Good spot, too. Oh, Good. we did it. Wide open spaces. See, trust the stash. Yes. Everybody's looking at me for some reason. Oh, it's very cold. Super cold. But it was a nice evening on the town. Yes. Everyone stared at Dalton's shirt. It was know. great. I don't know why. Let's see if the LTD will make it home. <laughs> well, the LTD is performing magnificently. We have about 20 minutes to home, about an hour out of Kansas City. So this is a good little maiden voyage for it. But it's just quiet as could be. The brakes quit being so grabby and uh, I have no complaints. Other than it kind of smells like gas when you park it. Now you actually think it's coming out of the charcoal canister under the hood, but that's something small we can deal with later. So let's just head on home and we'll see you there. Okay, bye. The LTD did magnificent, made it home. No problem, the brakes are great. Actually, the whole car is great. Drives wonderful. It's gonna be a great daily driver for years and years to come. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks for putting up with all the crap in this video and, and the delays that we had. But it was worth it, well worth it. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, go to <laughs> PullBarnMerch.com 
and uh, the sweaters that are on there those things are limited edition I don't know if we're gonna print any more of those until like next winter maybe so uh, go pick you up one they're cheap 